Hello, today's topic is support and movement. We are going to discuss on the support and movement in animals and plants. If something supports you, it means it prevents you from falling because you are either holding on to it or leaning against it. Whereas movement involves changing position or going from one place to another. All living things have a support system. The skeletal and muscular systems are the two parts of the support system in our body. Without a support system, the body would just collapse. And there are three basic types of skeleton. Endoskeleton, exoskeleton and hydrostatic skeleton. Land and aquatic vertebrates have endoskeleton. The endoskeleton consists of bones and cartilages. Human beings are supported by the endoskeleton. The weight of the human being is supported mainly by the pelvic girdle. This is the biggest and strongest bone in the body. The functions of the endoskeleton in humans are to support the weight of the body, to give the body its structure and shape, to produce blood cells, to protect soft organs of the body such as the heart and kidney, and to act as a base for the attachment of muscles. The endoskeleton of different land vertebrates is different. Animals such as the elephant and rhinoceros have rigid skeletons to support their body weight and to help them move using their four limbs. The limbs of large animals are usually short and thick. This structure makes the animal more stable. Animals such as sheep and deer have hollow leg bones. These bones are lighter and stronger than solid bones. This helps the animal to run in order to hunt for food or to run from being the food. Unlike land vertebrates, large aquatic vertebrates such as whales and dolphins have smaller and more flexible endoskeleton. Aquatic animals like the whales can grow to enormous sizes. This is because their body is supported by water so that their bones do not have to support all of their weight. Whales do not need large endoskeletons because their body weight gets support from buoyancy. Buoyancy is the force from water that makes the object float. Now, let's compare the support systems of land vertebrates and aquatic vertebrates. Similarities both land and aquatic vertebrates have endoskeletons. Differences Type of system Land vertebrates Skeletal system Aquatic vertebrates Buoyancy in water Structure of bones Land vertebrates Big and rigid Aquatic vertebrates Small and flexible Invertebrates such as the ant, cockroach and spider have no backbone. The shape and size of their body is determined by the exoskeleton. Exoskeleton is the hard material that covers their body. The function of the exoskeleton are maintaining the shape, supporting bodies, protecting organs, aiding movements and preventing the body from drying up. Insects such as beetle have exoskeleton called cuticle. Others like cockroaches and grasshopper undergo molting.
Bolting is the process where the exoskeleton is replaced every time the body of the insect grows bigger. Crustaceans like the snails have exoskeleton called the shell. The shell is made of calcium carbonate. Now, the next type of skeleton is hydrostatic skeleton. Invertebrates such as the slug, the earthworm and the caterpillar do not have a single bone in their body. Instead, they support themselves by using the pressure from inside their body. This pressure comes from the body fluid in their body. The body fluid presses against the skin so that their body becomes turgid and firm. It will provide them with shape and support. The body fluid also exerts a pressure on their body walls to form a hydrostatic skeleton. Aquatic invertebrates such as the starfish and jellyfish are supported by hydrostatic skeleton too. The fluid pressure in their body gives them the support and shape. So, we can conclude that the hydrostatic skeleton has the following functions. Like animals, plants too have a support system. The support system in plants can be classified into support system in land plants and support system in aquatic plants. There are two types of land plants, woody plants and non-woody plants. Let's start with the support system in woody plants. Woody plants include rubber trees, durian trees and rose shrubs. They usually have strong woody stems and woody tissues to support their large weight. This is a cross section of a tree trunk. The trunk of a woody plant is made up of woody tissue. The woody tissues are closely packed to form a strong stem. Some woody plants have additional features for support such as buttress roots, stilt roots and prop roots. Durian trees have buttress roots to help them have a better grip onto soil. Mangrove trees like Rhizophora species which grow in muddy places have stilt roots to provide additional support. Banyan trees have prop roots that grow from the branch into the soil. Next is the support system in non-woody plants. Non-woody plants include orchids and banana plants. Most non-woody plants have little woody tissue within the stems. Their sparse arrangement does not provide a strong support to the plant. There are two types of support system in non-woody plants that is by turgidity pressure or turgid pressure and special structures. What is turgidity pressure? First, let me show you an example of a flaccid plant cell. When the plant cell is flaccid, the stem is soft and loose. But when the cells in the stem absorb enough water, the water will push on the cell walls causing the cells to become turgid. When the cells are turgid, the stem will be upright. Now, that is turgidity pressure. But when the plant loses a lot of water, the pressure on the cell wall decreases and the plant will wilt. Some non-woody plants have special additional structures for more support. These special structures are clasping roots, thorns and tendrils. Plants like the money plant have clasping roots to help them home firmly on another plant 
for support. Bougainvilleas have thorns, which actually is a modified branch that cannot be easily removed from the stem. The thorns are used to climb and to obtain support by clinging onto other plants. Plants like the bitter gourd and cucumber have tendrils that twine around the stems of other plants in order to climb and grow upwards. Water provides support to aquatic plants. Examples of aquatic plants are hydrilla, water hyacinth and water lily. Aquatic plants have lots of sacs in their stems and leaves that make them light and able to float on water. Buoyancy helps to support the plants in the water. Once the plants are taken out from the water, they will limp and remain soft and weak. Well, that's today's lesson. Oops, sorry. I hope you've learned a lot today. Thank you and goodbye.